Hello. Now that we have this subroutine, let's clean it up a little. We do not really need any local variables, at least not now, so we do not need to allocate a space for them. And then we do not even need a complex instruction like enter here. We can just go back to a simpler sequence. Let's also give it a better name, for example something like to lowercase, because this is what it appears to be doing. And one more thing, you may have noticed here in the import section that it is possible to define a sequence of bytes as a character string. So here instead of using these row values for 1, for 2, for 3, we can just write it as ABC directly. And this is the same. Now, there is one problem with this uh, procedure. It simply adds 2O to every single byte. So if we have something like, for example, 0 character, 3O, and we add 2O to this, we get 5O, a capital letter P. So this just shifts all characters while if we wanted it to really be to lowercase, it should only do this shift for characters in this range, uppercase A to Z. But before we are able to do this, let's take a look at what happens when we add two large numbers together. You may know a classic example of uh, some decimal counter, for example, three decimal digits from 0 to 9, that counts something. 1, 2, 3, then finally it reaches 999, and it keeps counting, then it wraps back to zero. This is because the result should have been 1000, but this digit that carries over is lost because we only have three digits, for example. Something similar happens in computer registers. When we take this value, which is a maximum value of a byte, ff hexadecimal, a byte has only two hexadecimal digits. Then when we add one to it, the byte portion wraps to zero, because this is this carryover does not fit in a byte. This is a third hexadecimal digit. So when we keep result in a byte, then this carryover is lost. Let's see it in practice. We now have FF in AL, when we increase it, it goes back to zero. A zero flag is set, so we could detect that this happened this way, but not when we add a larger number. So let's add two. ff plus 2, it is now 1, 0 flag is not set, so it is of no help, but there is another flag that is set, this is called carry flag, and as the name implies, this is a bit that is a digit that should be carried over to higher digits, so this also indicates that we have wrapped through 0. 
and something similar happens for subtraction. So let's say that we subtract 4 from 2 and see what happens. So we go down to 0 from 2 and then we still decrement it twice. So we go down to FF after wrapping through 0 and then down to, down to FE. And then in this case also carry flag is set. In this case it means uh, that this is a borrow from a higher bit. But we can also view it simply as meaning that we have wrapped through zero. Now for zero flag we have some conditional jumps. And we have similar jumps for carry flag. So we can jump if carry is set or jump if carry is not set. Because carry is set when we subtract a larger number from a smaller one, then we can use it for our purpose. So let's go back here. Read this character. Subtract value of code of uh, uppercase A for one. And if for one is larger than AL, then carry is set. And let's jump to this place, skipping this instruction so we do not add 2O for such values that are smaller than for one. And yes, we have now zero preserved. Now there is another instruction that we can use here instead of sub. It is a compare instruction, CMP, which does exactly the same operation, except for one thing, it does not store the result into this register. So in this case, when we do not care about the result of subtraction, we only care about the carry flag, then this instruction is perfect for us. And also, this uh, jump if carry has an alias, another name, jump if below, which is intended to be used with this compare instruction, just for readability. Let's take a look in at the bugger. You can see that they are indeed the same instruction, JB in both cases. In a similar manner, jump if zero flag is set also has another name, jump if equal, to be used in a places like this one. And then we also have a jump that combines uh, two checks, jump if below or equal. This jumps if either carry flag is set or zero flag is set. And it also has another name. Jump if not above. And we also have jump if above and jump if above or equal.
above or equal means that this is not below. So this is in fact simply if not carry. So then jump if above is going to combine again combine uh, checking carry flag with zero flag. So if it is above or equal but not equal So we have all these combinations and they are after just different names for the same basic few jumps. So now that we have checked that this is not below this character, we can also check that this is not above Z. So let's take a code of uppercase Z, 5A. And if it is above, then also skip this instruction. So now this should work also for cases like this. It's okay. We can also write codes of letters this way. This is equivalent. And now we can even detect this zero character at the end. So instead of doing this loop, we can check if character was zero. And jump as long as it is not zero. So we stop looping when we reach this zero character. We no longer need an counter in ECX. So we can even get rid of this second second argument. We now just take a single argument. Let's test it on a longer string. And that's all for now. Thank you for watching.